A donor lunch, a fundraiser, if you will, over the weekend at Mar-a-Lago. Donald Trump reportedly mocked two of his potential VP picks to their faces, which makes Trump a little more fun, to be honest with you. So what did he say? Well, let's start off with Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, who, to be quite honest, I had forgotten was even considered as a potential VP pick. But apparently he said of J.D. Vance, quote, J.D. has turned out to be incredible. You know, he wasn't a supporter of mine. It shows you I can change him. He was saying things like, this guy's a total disaster. So uh, it is true, if you're unfamiliar with uh, J.D. Vance's origin story, he did start off by being a vociferous critic of Donald Trump, outspoken critic. Uh, during the 2016 campaign, Vance had identified himself as never Trump and said he- Oops. <laughs> I know, right, so embarrassing, and loathed the former president. And once wondered on Twitter, quote, what percentage of the American population has Donald Trump sexually assaulted? Now, Vance's opinion of Trump changed after he realized that pandering to Trump is what you need to do as a Republican candidate in order to gain some favor among the Republican voting base. But he wasn't the only notorious Trump flip flopper slash bootlicker who was humiliated at the stoner lunch. I just wanted to start with Vance because that was the more tame example of Trump humiliating someone. We're gonna get to Tim Scott in just a moment. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. Yeah, this is what he does on a regular basis. That's why when you go to endorse him, you have to be ready for the humiliation that comes as part of the package. And so all these guys knew, or at least should have, I mean, they're the dumbest people in the world if they didn't know that was coming. You remember what he did to Chris Christie and so many others Mitt last Romney. time around. Uh, Pete Se like Jeff Sessions and it goes on and on and on, right? So, uh, so th they signed up for getting roasted. So that's what he's doing here. You know, there was a Tom Brady roast over the weekend on Netflix. This is the Trump anti roast where he roasts everyone else. Yep. And he's like, ah, this moron thought he could criticize me, but I broke him in half. Look at this little bitch I brought to you here. Yeah. Bend down, you little per you little loser. Okay. Uh, you see how I make the losers bend down to me. Ha <laughs> It'd be so much fun if one of them was named Chuck. You know, mm -hmm. Chuck roast. Uh. So it's Cut of Don't meat, watch. yeah, okay, anyway. Uh, let's move on to Senator Tim Scott, who's also on the short list as a potential VP pick for Trump. Trump said Scott, who got a big round of applause, was a good candidate, but an unbelievable surrogate before adding that people thought he was a little bit dull. Little People are saying, people are saying <laughs> that Scott seems a little bit dull. I mean, Which by the way is accurate, a guy always seems like he's about to fall asleep. Well, two things about that, one is that Look, it's actually the most benign out of all of his insults. And as Anna said many times, he's the best insult comic in the country. And so that was a little tame, right? But even so, imagine any other politician or businessman or anyone else inviting a bunch of people in and and then roasting them involuntarily in front of an audience. I mean, and being like, hey, you see my friend over here, he's so boring, ha <laughs> ha, you're so dull. Everybody would be like, what? That's Why so, is he doing that? It's so bad. No, I mean, it would, be, yeah, it would be like Jenk saying nice things about me and then referencing audience members who have said terrible things about me, right? Or like, imagine like, don't like, do that. Like, no, but like, he's trying to pick a VP. That's his number two, right? So if Anna or I were to say, like, oh, yeah, Anna's not bad, but she's a little dull, you know? Like, right in front of her. People are saying she's dull. No You'd one's saying like, that about me. Yeah, well, that a was too, a little too salty, a little too spicy. <laughs> that's unlikely. But, it's just, I, we've gotten used to Trump being a maniac, but I just wanted to remind you, in any other context, even the most benign of these mm -hmm. comments would be outrageous and unbelievable. If Biden said it about his, like, ah, I like Kamala Harris, but she's a little boring, you know what I mean? People are like, what? What did he just say, right? Like if Biden mm -hmm. called one of our biggest allies xenophobes? Uh -huh. Right, like that would be pretty outrageous, right? <laughs> yeah. Which is what Biden did last week yeah. in regard to Japan. I, I hear you, Biden says other outrageous things, but he doesn't do insults of his uh, own party members. And anyways, and then the last thing is, that's why Tim Scott's leading, because he wants his VP to be dull. Remember last time he picked Mike Pence, 
cuz he he's such a sensitive little man child that if anyone gets any of the attention that isn't named Trump, he's like, "No, I don't want him getting the attention. I want me getting the attention." So that's him partly bragging about Tim Scott. And by the way, like this is what Trump is really good at, right? The insult comic part of him is one that I particularly appreciate and enjoy. And I just gotta give you a little tasty taste of what I'm talking about. Let's watch. And then the New York Times did a fake story today, big front page, that JD wasn't sure if he wanted my support. JD is kissing my ass, he wants my support. So I'm 18 points up. If I was 18 points down, he wouldn't want my support. I'll tell you, Jim Jordan wants my support and he's doing just fine, right? No, these are fake people. These are dishonest, these are very dishonest people. Did you ever think that she actually appointed you, Tim? <laughs> and think of it, appointed and you're the senator of his state and she endorsed me. You must really hate her. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's a shame, it's a shame, uh-oh. <laughs> I just love you. No, that's that's why he's a great politician. Today was a big story, the biggest story out there. She's engaged to be married. We never thought this was going to happen. What's going on? Oh, I just, I love it. I, I want more. Give so me if more. You, if you don't know the story, he is referring to Tim Scott being engaged because the rumors are that he's gay. And so that's why Trump said we never thought it was gonna happen. He's outing his own potential VP as gay. He's unbelievable. But what was worse, although in Republican circles that might be worse, but what was worse is he pointed to JD Vance in the crowd and was like, JD Vance kissed my ass. And then JD Vance, like a bitch, was like, Listen. Oh my God. There's a real Ooh. problem in America. There's a real masculinity problem in America. Yes, and okay. it's among Republican politicians. 100%. Terrible. Terrible. Uh, look, there's some nonsense about how Marco Rubio is another potential VP. He's not going to be. That's not, let's, just, let's not even waste our breath talking about it. Come on. Really, little Marco? Where, where did that come from? Did Marco Rubio leak something to make it appear like he was being considered? He's not being considered. At all, okay? Yeah, I, I don't know where it came from, but it's nonsense. But by the way, guys, look, all this speculation about who the VP is gonna be is in itself, it's fun, it's fun, and I've done it, I'm guilty, okay? Uh, but it's all kind of nonsense, because Trump's gonna pick five minutes before he makes the pick, he's gonna decide. I think like, because he changes his mind all the time, it's whoever kisses ass last. It's gonna be Rick Scott. No, I mean, look. There Rick was a, Scott? I'm sorry, Tim Scott. Oh, Tim I, Scott, oh, my bad. I misspoke, Tim Scott. Because that's another senator. Obviously. I keep going back and forth because there's a part of me that thinks mm, he's gonna pick Tulsi Gabbard, right? Because Tulsi Gabbard might appeal to some of the more moderate Republicans who don't know that she's like literally in a cult and she's a lunatic. Um, but. I think that even someone as monotone as Tulsi Gabbard might have too much riz for Donald Trump. Whereas Tim Scott's not a threat, right? Tim Scott isn't gonna outshine him in any way. So I think it might be Tim Scott, we'll see. Yeah, so for a long time I thought for sure he was gonna go with a woman. So either Marjorie Taylor Greene, Carrie Lake or Christy Noem. Those, all three of those now have issues and he doesn't like how much Carrie Lake hangs around. and. She's too obsequious, even for Trump. Oh, oh, that's so miserable. Marjorie Taylor Greene, a little too crazy for Trump. Unbelievable. Christy Noem, a little too vicious for Trump because he, she murdered her own dog. Unbelievable, okay? So now having said all this, guys, the most important, so now at this point, if you made me pick today, I'd say Tim Scott, I'd agree with Anna, but he's not gonna pick today. He's gonna pick later and a million things are gonna happen in between. But last thing is, we you have no idea how much we dodged a bullet. Because reports are that he actually did the smart thing and offered it to RFK Jr. And if RFK Jr. had accepted, this election would already be over. And so for all of the attacks that the Biden team does on RFK Jr., and some of which are totally merited, by the way. RFK Jr. might have saved the country by not accepting the VP role under Trump. Because if his 10 to 15 points go over to Trump, it's good night, Irene.
Now, final thing that I'll mention about this fundraiser at Mar-a-Lago over the weekend is that Trump not only humiliated his potential VP picks, he apparently tried to humiliate some of his donors who he alleged weren't donating enough to his campaign. So the Washington Post reports that Trump complained about having to take so many pictures with donors and told people in the crowd that if they didn't get a picture, it was because they didn't give enough money. He also <laughs> so funny, man. So good. He also claimed that a wedding at the property got preference over the donors because the wedding was paying more per person to be there. He's so nakedly greedy, it's it's amazing to watch. It he is, it, it is, it is. At one point, as if he were at an auction, Trump told the crowd, quote, anyone who makes a $1 million donation right now at the Republican Party, to the Republican Party, I will let you come up and speak. Two donors then came to the stage and one told the crowd, Donald J. Trump is the person that God has chosen. Okay, well, at least that moron's out a million dollars. No, but like, <laughs> listen, you can hate the game, right? But the player knows how the game is played, and he's playing the game very clearly. Like, yeah. I mean, think about the confidence, right? All right, I need you guys to donate a million dollars if you want to have an opportunity to come up here and speak. And then two of the donors did it. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. And last thing, guys. So, Donald Trump is not an honest person. He's lied about just about everything you could possibly imagine, right? But he has the appearance of honesty because he does things like this. Because mm -hmm. an average guy that's looking at that and goes, well, that's not a standard fake politician. I mean, he's saying it like it is. And when it comes to humiliating his friends and allies, he is saying it like it is. When it comes to humiliating even his own donors, he is saying it like it is. But not when it comes to Donald Trump. Then, oh, I won the election, my businesses were amazing. I <laughs> I got out of Vietnam because I had bone spurs in a foot I don't remember. <laughs> okay, oh, the charity money is going to the actual charities. Right, so, but with that air of authenticity. No, as people like it. People like it, yeah. and that's a giant problem for fake politicians like Biden to compete with. Yeah, I mean, Biden's playing by old rules that don't appeal to voters, whereas Trump is like, I'm corrupt and I'm being honest about it. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.